Basically what's a I'd call the chocolate drop or a brown caddis or that brown caddis. Which is a good pattern to have in your box. This one has a wee highlight of the the peacock hero. It's bleached and dyed peacock hero. Uh, dyed the sunburst, which is a nice nice bright colour. And uh, as you can see it certainly highlights that point of the thorax. Now it's quite a simple fly to tie. The hook I'm using, this is a Camasan, it's a B170 and it's a size 12. 12, 14, I mean you could even go a size 10 if you want. Uh, there is some big holders that this will represent. Thread I'm going to be using, this is a, just a dark brown Uni 8 We we'll start with thread at the eye, just putting down a layer of thread. Now I'm going to get to about, say, just before the halfway mark in the shank and then I'm going to tie in some fine copper wire. This is to protect the body of the fly. So pull it into that point and wind down. This will just save a wee tad bit of bulk. Sometimes it's easier to tie the ribbon the way down anyway. The body, you could use a dubbin, a seals for dubbin or something like that. But I'm going to use a dyed brown this is a cock pheasant tail, just a natural tail when dyed brown. Now what you need about maybe a dozen or so fibres, just to make sure the tips are lined up. And what I do is come round with say a single turn, just loose like, and then pull it into the tips. Get as close as you can and then nice and tight, tie them in. Now the pheasant tail fibre is not very strong so you have to protect that and the best way is either to wind it over some super glue or in this way I'm going to wind it towards myself and then come over with the rib which will protect the body. Now what I'm going to do is start, start at the back obviously and then just build up a taper by slightly coming back on the turn before just basically coming on the top of it. And then keep working my way up to this point here, just about, just slightly by halfway. Now to catch it in, you go across the feather, the pheasant tail fibres with a turn, nice and tight, and a turn on the hook. Do the same again, and again. And then we can trim away the excess, just trim that away. And then we bring the wire up, the normal way, the same way we wind with thread. So we do a turn at the back and then work our way up, looking for a good five to six turns to make sure it's caught in. Come up against the thread, bend the wire so it locks in nice and tight and then bend and break it away. And that's your pheasant tail body. You see you can have a, a normal say a seals fur or some sort of dubbing or whatever you like, um, it's up to yourself. The wing, this is roe deer, dyed a dark brown, same colour as the pheasant tail. You see it's a nice colour, you can see in this one there's got a nice black tip on it, and that's what you're looking for. Now, take some of the fibres out, just to form the wing, trim it close to the skin, and then just open the fibres to cut the inside and remove any under fur. I'm going to stack it, just put it into your stack of tips first and then tap it in your desk. You'll find the tips, oops, it's stuck. So I'm going to put it back in. What happens sometimes is we short ends or broken ends will stick. So basically you've got to put it back in again and put it back on your desk. Just tap it. And come back, do it again. Yeah, I think the cleaner needs cleaned in the inside. It's getting a bit greasy, I think. Now, length of the wing. At least they're looking to measure the length of the shank. So when you tie it on there, it's slightly by. So that's the length of the shank there. Tie it in, so it's just slightly by. And then holding the wing, come in. Now I'm just going to a couple of loose turns to position the wing at this point. Keeping these fibres on top, don't let them go. I'm going to take the thread down towards the eye, leave at least a head length 
underneath the deer here because I'm going to leave these cut ends and then I'm going to work my way back up securing them in right up against the pheasant tail now I'm going to take the fibre slightly forward and crease them so if you take it there you'll see it bending if you crease them up here what this does it lowers or keeps the wing nice and low just as you want it like that just keeping them on top as I say leave these because these are going to get trimmed just like you would do an elk hair caddis then just say we'll get the bleached and dyed peacock kettle just remove two from the feather what I'm going to do here is just cut away the waist these are the butts or the section that's actually closest to the stem of the, the feather I'm going to catch that on the side and then making sure it's the body's nice and tight against the pheasant tail make sure it's tied in now to protect that what I like to do is use some super glue and this is Loctite super glue just going to come round and touch it. Got a couple of these fibres, but pull them up. Touch it so that when you're winding the peacock curl in it, it sticks. And it makes it really strong. Now you're looking probably three turns or so down. Come in nice and tight and tie in. Trim that away. Now for the hackle, I'm just going to check this thing. For the hackle, I'm just going to use this is a Hebert Miner saddle, it's a cock saddle, and it's chocolate brown, or it's a chocolate brown colour. It's actually Coachman brown. It's one of the nicest colours you could have. It's a great colour for this fly. Just bear some of the stem, tie it on the side. You're looking for the, it's up to yourself, but the natural curve of the fibres to go or the underside of the feather facing over the eye. Just wind it down, nice and tight, up against, just check the distance you've got. These cut ends of the deer here, then bring your thread in front. And then wind down, form your hackle. Take your time, depending on how heavy you want it. I like to put a good turn or two, you can always trim the underside of this if you want it to sit a bit flatter. Now at this point just come underneath across your thread then come up, just watch these cut ends of the deer here. Now really I don't, I, I always get one or two so but just make sure you tie it in. Watch you don't go too close to the eye, just get that proportion right and you'll find it much easier to tie off. Now folded back the hackle, I'm just going to get some varnish, put it onto the thread and whip finish, holding back the deer hair. This is why you keep the deer hair long so that you can move it out of the way when you need to. If you cut it short, you spend more time trying to get around it. Trim away your thread, break off your hackle or cut it away. And then you want to trim these at a slight angle, these cut ends. You see how things are sitting. That looks okay. And watch your hackle fibres. If you miss one or two, just come back. Or even if you don't want them, just trim them or break them off. I'd rather do that than cut away the fibre. And trim this one. Okay. A wanderer, as they say. And there we are. And there. It's a nice pattern. I mean, you can tie this whatever colour you like. With the, the brown caddis or chocolate. Or chocolate drop. Good pattern.